I can't believe I'm doing this. There are so many questions that are better than this one. But if you are just starting out in your programming journey, then there is a slight chance that the interviewer just might ask you this particular question. So here we are and let's get started. Here's the classic statement of the FizzBuzz problem. We have to print integers from 1 to 100 both inclusive and for multiples of 3 instead of printing the integer we should print fizz, for multiples of 5 print buzz and for multiples of both 3 and 5 we should print fizzbuzz. Now whenever you are given a programming challenge it's always a great idea to visualize it with a few examples. We want to print integers like 1, 2 but when they are multiples of 3 for example 3 and 6 we want to print fizz and for multiples of 5 like 5 and 10 we want to print buzz and for multiples of both 3 and 5 like 15 we want to print fizzbuzz. Now with that example out of the way let's start solving this problem step by step. First we have to print integers from 1 to 100 and we can do that with a simple for loop that starts at 1 and terminates before 101 and increments by 1 in each iteration. A naive approach would be to take the various conditions and map them into simple if else blocks. So if it is divisible by 3 we print fizz, if it is divisible by 5 we print buzz and if it is divisible by both 3 and 5 we print fizzbuzz otherwise we lock the integer. However this is not a correct solution and we can see that when we execute the program for the case when the number is divisible by both 3 and 5 instead of logging fizzbuzz it's logging fizz. And this is a key mistake that a lot of beginning developers make. Fundamentally, the key realization that is missing over here is that the three conditions are not mutually exclusive. If something is a multiple of both 3 and 5, it is essentially also a multiple of 3 and also a multiple of 5. Now once you make that realization, it's pretty straightforward to come up with the solution. We first check if it's a multiple of both 3 and 5 and in that case print fizzbuzz and then jump to the more loose cases of just 3 and 5 divisibility. And of course this works as expected, logging fizzbuzz for 15 and fizz and buzz for 3 and 5. Now there is a general programming pattern over here and that is that when you have an overlap of conditionals, always do the specific case first and then handle the loose cases later. Now this is definitely a correct solution and whenever given a choice, a correct solution is better than no solution. But this is not the ideal solution so let's jump back to the code and discuss how you can improve it further. Now there are a few things that are not ideal about this code. First off, there is a duplication of the checks with person 3 and person 5 going on over here and we could fix that by storing them in temporary variables but a bigger realization here is that we are using a lot of repeated console log statements. If we take a closer look at the problem statement, note that there is always a print happening in all the conditions. Once you make that connection, even a bigger realization is that 3 is always mapping to the output phase 5 is always mapping to the output buzz. So let's take a look at how we can take advantage of this fact with code. First, we always have to log some string so let's create a variable to store that result and remove the duplication of console log to a single console log of the result. Next, we simply amend result and if the index is divisible by 3, we amend fizz and if it is divisible by 5, we amend buzz. And this takes care of all the three main conditions. 3 gets mapped to fizz, 5 gets mapped to buzz and 3 combined with 5 gets mapped to fizzbuzz. And now for the outlier condition, when it is not divisible by 3 or 5, we always want to print the incoming index and we can do that with a simple assignment. And of course it works as expected but this time the program is much simpler because it is not a blind interpretation of the problem statement but instead uses some intuitive facts about the inputs and the outputs. Now as a bonus bonus point, one thing that is great about this particular implementation is that it is easily expandable to other multiple checks. For example, for multiples of 7, if you wanted to print more, we can add that quite easily. And that's all for this lesson. If you enjoyed it, then smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.